What's good, everybody? I want to welcome you back to Nick's Deli, baby. Yeah. Welcome back. Welcome back. Come on, man. It's upon us. The season is upon us. Camp is here. Content day. So much to talk about. So much to talk about about our New York Knicks. So much excitement surrounding the squad, man. And I absolutely love it. I'm seeing content creators starting to rev up, starting to knock the dust off. And I'm here for that as well. If you're here for the first time, I want to thank you for joining me. My name is Shia. I am the proprietor. I'm the owner of Nick's Deli, baby. We're out here in these YouTube streets. Here in Nick's Deli, everybody eats, baby. So I want to welcome you. I want to thank you for joining my channel. Do me a favor, click the subscribe button if you enjoy what it is we're talking about. You rock with the energy. You rock with the vibe. Nick's Deli in the regular season is a little bit different. We go through a short menu, and that menu's going to change. The, one, the menu is going to change, so look forward to that as well. But I welcome you. If you are returning to the channel, my SB community, you already know. Welcome back, baby. Welcome back. I appreciate you always for rocking and building this thing up. Out here in these YouTube streets, let's go. Okay? But I want to get on here real quick. A couple of videos are coming your way this week as we rev up for the season. But there's a lot of interesting things taking place with this team. A lot of interesting things taking place with this team, and I wanted to hop on it. But today, what I want to talk about is the fact that Madison Square Garden, the New York Knicks organization, is starting to heal itself. It's almost like we had to fast for a little bit. And that was the five a six thin years that we had as an organization, as a team, as a fan base. We felt empty inside. We had to go through that fasting process. And then it was the detox process. So the detox process where we had to cut out a lot of the bad habits, lean up, go through the process of getting these headaches as we cut out all the things that we were so accustomed to that was toxifying our organization. And now we're at the point where we've healed up the body is starting to get healthy, but you can do, you got to do a step further than healing the body. You got to start taking care of the spirit. You got to start taking care of the mind. You, you got to start healing holistically. And this is what I'm here to talk about. I'm talking about the fact that the New York Knicks organization is starting to heal. And what do you mean by that shit? What are you talking about shit? Let me tell you what I mean. The announcement that the New York Knicks are looking to bring back or looking to bring to the announcement team, Mark Jackson. Yeah. Looking to maybe add to the announcement team, Jeff Van Gundy. Okay? To add to a Mike Breen, to add to the legend, the Hall of Famers team of Mark Breen and Walt Clyde Frazier. The fact that they want to bring back Mark Jackson, uh, not, not bring back, bring back to the organization, but for the first time, bring to the announcing booth, Mark Jackson and Jeff Van Gundy. That's big. When we talk about healing, you got to understand beyond the 10 year period, going all the way back to where this first began to unravel and if Marv Albert left and in the way that he left, when Marv Albert left, he was one of the voices that I absolutely loved to hear for Knicks games. One of the voices that I absolutely love to hear, my favorite voice that I love to hear calling New York Knicks games would be Johnny Hoops, John Andres. Absolutely loved how descriptive he was. I absolutely loved his energy, the way he broke down the game, even as a young pup for me. That was outstanding. But what I love is years after Al Albert, years after Andres, it began to dwindle. You know, we had some people who held us down like a Gus Johnson on the radio. We had some people who held us down in that fashion. But eventually you started seeing people leave the organization as we started to go on our, down, our downturn. And a lot of those people who left, left bitter. So when they got jobs on local networks, sometimes they went to the ops. You know, they went over to the bridge, across the bridge, they went to the Brooklyn Nets. Or if they went to ESPN, anytime Knicks games were covered, they would join in the in the chorus of boos and disparagement that was aimed directly towards the New York Knicks organization, and indirectly as the New at, at the New York Knicks fans as collateral damage. 
And for for a long time, I'm gonna tell you, I gotta be honest, that left a bitter taste in my mouth. Poor. Oh, yeah. It left a bitter taste in my mouth when everybody started calling. And this is not the entire fan base who feel this way. I can only speak for myself. When the fan base started calling for them to consider a Mark Jackson for the coaching role, I'm like, nah, son, I'm good. Nah, son, I'm good. Any play for the Ops, any play for Indiana, I think I'm good on that. Nah, son, I'm good. Brief period, I was just like, all right, maybe. But nah, son, for the most part, I'm good. It almost seemed like every now, every, every now and again, you're going to throw in a little bit of something. And I know what it is like if you're from a particular hometown. Mark Jackson is from New York. He's a, he's a Queens kid. He's from New York. Okay? And I know if you have a professional job and you're trying not to be a homer, you're trying not to show favoritism towards the New York market, then you tend to be a little extra critical. Whereas on other teams, you don't have that much investment, so you're not that critical on them. But everybody, it's open season on, on criticism when it comes to the New York Knicks. So I felt a certain way. And you know what? New York Knicks fans, we voice our opinions, so you know that they heard it as well. And almost seems like in recent years, Jeff Van Gundy's job was to criticize uh, every move that the New York Knicks was doing. Now, if I'm going to be honest with you, I think that was an inside job. I think that was intentional. I think part of, especially it seemed like since uh, Tom Thibodeau got here, Jeff Van Gundy would take opportunities to step on the stepping stool and step on his, you know, high horse and start talking about why the Knicks aren't going to be good. And I think that came as a result of conversations he may have been having with Tom Thibodeau. And a, a, an example that I could have to kind of, you know, bolster my uh, conspiracy theory is, you know, when the New York Knicks signed Jalen Brunson, one of the first things that they said was he's just a piece. He is not the savior of this organization. He's a nice piece that hopefully will lead us to a team that's going to win on a consistent basis for long term. They really tried to quell the excitement surrounding Jalen Brunson and the fact that the New York Knicks didn't necessarily get disillusioned by what they had seen from him in the Dallas playoff run on their way to the, East, the Western Conference. They really tried to tamper down that excitement. And I think that was the role that Jeff Van Gundy was playing as well. Tamper down the excitement of Knicks fans so that if we perform well, we exceed expectations. Okay? But the fact of the matter is this. We are now in a place where two out of the last three years we've made the playoffs. We've shown incremental improvement. We've kept our own young players. We've developed them. We've given them roles. We've held them, responsib we've held them responsible to those roles. We didn't necessarily move on from them. One year and there, now, now and again, they're now becoming veterans. R.J. Barrett, Julius Randle have been with the New York Knicks organization for five years now. Do you believe that? Five years. I remember when he came here and he was a deer in headlights. And the moment the New York Knicks fans started getting at him, the shoulders would slump, the face would scowl, and the body language would soften. And now it's to the point where this man is confident enough now to wear sketches, goddammit. He don't care what the New York Knicks fan base say. He don't care. He's, this man is moving at his own pace. All right, so I'm, I'm hoping that he's able to recapture the energy and, and the ability and the moments that he had in 2020 because Julius Randle, nobody wants to give him credit for this, but Julius Randle is responsible for the reignition of the excitement of the New York Knicks fan base coming out of the pandemic and starting this movement that we see now with his performance in 2020 and that magical year that he had when there was no fans that were in the crowd. So it really kind of makes you appreciate how far we've come when you reflect on how far ago that was as well. But the fact of the matter that a, a Mark Jackson, a, a, a Jeff Van Gundy would consider coming back or look to come back to these New York Knicks. The fact of the matter that we have um, a front office and a coach in place that can work as the medium between ownership and, and heal any of the uh, uh, of the, the, the pieces, mend the pieces that may have been all over the place as a result of their departure, uh, whenever that was, 
it says a lot about the healing that's taking place in the New York Nick organization. Reconciliation. At some points, there were considered reconcilable differences. Let me get it right. It's early on a Saturday morning. But now, the New York Knicks organization is healthy enough in the front office, administratively, organizationally, player-wise, reputation-wise, that now people want to get closer to the New York Knicks. Now people want to associate and stand side by side with the New York Knicks organization. Hell, the media is trying to, to advocate with Adam Silver. Do something to make the New York Knicks talk to us. We need to have access to uh, the front office president and the GM and the players more than we have right now because they see we're on the precipice of winning. They see we're on the precipice of building something up and building something big. Great interviews by my fellow Nick fan, Nick content creators as well, when they bring on the Mark Bermans or they bring on uh, the Frank I. Solas. These are people who flip the lighter and set things on fire on their way out and, 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 and kind of smirk and would say things on national media that they know Nick fans would, 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 would uh, get pressed about. And maybe they weren't doing it to directly agitate Nick fans, but they know that they, to do that, they would agitate the organization. So one thing I absolutely love is the fact that you could tell Frank Isola wants to be reconnected with the New York Nick organization. He wants to be able to cover them for writing. He wants that attention from Nick fans. It's a goddamn swamp over in Brooklyn, just like it was in New Jersey. They got that New Jersey stench on them, all right? And he's covering them. He went to them to cover for them, but he can't keep his eyes off the other side of the bridge. And I love every moment of it. And I think as New York Nick fans, we are super loyal. We're super respectful, contrary to what anybody outside of New York will say. And I think we give too much credit for these folks and we're allowing them too much of, of, of uh, grace in coming back to what it is that we have now. You ain't want to roll with us. We was on, on, on the upswing. You weren't with us when we were shooting in the gym. You weren't with us when we were shooting in the gym. Out in these YouTube streets. Out in these suffrage streets. But now a lot of people are trying to reassociate themselves, reattach themselves to the New York Knicks organization. And good, bad, or indifferent, it is a sign of healing. So I'm excited for it. I'm letting y'all all know we see you. We see you in what you're trying to do. We may still be a little bit bitter, but what we won't do, if you're from New York and you've been associated with us at some point, we won't completely close the door. Because if anything else, as long as you pay your dues, you have a right for redemption. That goes to anybody. New York Knicks fans, I know we could be unforgiving sometimes. But at the same time, we've gone through a lot. And with all those people, such as uh, the Michael Rappaport, all of them, Stephen A. Smith, all of them, each of us have gone through some level of of New York Nick trauma that had us in our feelings, whether it was against the organization, the owner, the coach of the Nick fans, but we're in a different season and we're close to taking it to a different level. And if any time is the right time, now is the right time to make amends, to heal, and to make our Knicks nation as strong as possible as we make this run for the next 10 years. What say you? Keep this in mind, everything that applies to life, that applies to our team, there's no struggle, there's no progress. And also remember this, out here in these YouTube streets and here in Nick's Deli, everybody else. I'm your host, Shea, and I'm out. Peace.